praise the Lord. Let's turn to the word of God this morning. We'll turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, read from uh, it's a big chapter now we don't have time to read the whole chapter so we shall read from verse 43 onwards to 48 Matthew chapter 5 43 onwards to 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and uh, hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you, have, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So we focus on the word uh, 48, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So we shall now uh, pray. Um, last uh, Yesterday we had uh, the fasting prayer session and uh, some of you came. Uh, some of you maybe had work uh, your responsibilities and job and everything. Uh, but those who are uh, able to come, they came. And um, it was a time of uh, uh, deep fellowship with the Lord uh, during these prayer sessions. Every month we have uh, special prayer sessions uh, that is on the uh, Second Saturday, 10 o'clock uh, through 1 o'clock. And then we have fourth Friday also, night uh, from 8.30 to uh, 12 o'clock at least. Uh, we have press prayer sessions. And uh, this coming week, uh, from 18th, uh, that is next week, 18th uh, uh, Monday, through Friday, we are going to have a time of uh, spending time in the presence of God and praying and uh, preparing for the coming year. So every prayer session is very, very important. It's as important as uh, uh, the uh, worship service every Sunday. But also every Tuesday we have fellowship for uh, ladies from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So these fellowships are times of uh, coming together and seeking the face of God, uh, taking time, waiting, waiting upon the Lord and um, uh, at that time, God speaks to us. Yesterday, God spoke to us through the anointed servant of God. 
prophetic word of god god spoke to us god is a good god god is a loving god he is a compassionate god he is always uh, strengthening us and uh, encouraging us he is with us and uh, he uh, he has saved us above all he has saved us he has saved our souls that we shall not perish but for jesus what would have happened to us just imagine but for jesus but for the salvation what would have happened that we should not take our salvation for granted that we should not take our uh, you know our jesus for granted it is not just some okay i am a christian so i go to church uh, it's not like that it's something you know uh, very very unique if you not not known jesus just imagine what would have happened to us some of us probably may not be alive here this morning but for the lord so how how valuable is uh, is our lord our salvation our church the church assembling is is not just for the sake of uh, some practice so christians they go to church on sunday morning muslims go to the mosque on friday afternoon it's not like that or some other religious people they go for their uh, rituals on some days uh, special auspicious days and all those things are there are we just just like any anyone in on earth uh, what is the difference between us and others who is our god what kind of a god we have who is he whom we are worshiping and uh, the worship is of course we sing nice uh, uh, songs and choruses and we sing and worship god in this fashion but worship is also much more than that sitting quietly in the presence of god is also worship just uh, giving a heart to jesus and um, meditating upon uh, the word of god and uh, having a communication with god in the spirit and glorify him adoring him thanking him there are many ways of worship but we have to worship do we personally do we have the habit of worshiping god worshiping our lord jesus christ worshiping the triune god how is our personal relationship uh, with god or we are just uh, having a, a rubber stamp of <laughs> christian on our heads so we are just coming and going and we go under the name of i am a christian and all that in the society the neighbors say this guy is a christian so are we going under that kind of a stamp rubber stamp or truly are we having a fellowship with our god a vibrant living fellowship a day to day fellowship moment by moment fellowship or is he only a religion uh, so a religious duty sunday morning church then comes christmas and decorations and color all this uh, you know decorations paper and beautiful balloons and uh, all kinds of things is this christian life what is christian life is it decoration <laughs> christmas cake and uh, all those things 
so how are we where are we god asked adam after he disobeyed god ate the forbidden fruit he was hiding behind the bushes so god asked him adam where are you where are thou when god asked adam adam in in hebrew his his name is adam in english is adam in tamil it's adam so adam means ah dam the two syllables in that one syllable uh, is uh, should not be audible that's the first letter of the hebrew language which you might probably find in some of the bibles most of the bibles have on psalm 1 and 19 uh, the first letter on top of the first verse there are 22 letters alphabets uh, you'll find that the first one on top of psalm 19 is uh, x like uh, sim- sim- symbol there's the first letter of the hebrew word and that first letter denotes god it's uh, is a symbol uh, which uh, says, says, you know it's a strong man strong man the strong one the almighty so that in the pronunciation of that letter just like we say a in english a or b the it's called alf alf and alf is not to be pronounced is to be only uttered in the spirit ah then uh the two other letters uh uh dalith and mem these two letters join together dam ah dam ah dam so adam so that is the hebrew the first uh, man's name adam that means ah means almighty god sovereign god he has breathed his breath into him he made him out of the dust of the earth and created him he put blood into him god created blood human blood god created our blood and god has put the blood into uh, adam and breath his uh, uh, you know breath into him ruah ruah that means breath of god so man became a living being adam god and man in blood so he's made uh, his whole body is blood how many percentage blood full of water and uh, 61 blood so, and this blood body uh, god and this blood body joined together is adam adam means all human beings also adam so we are created by our god so whom we are worshiping are we just taking it very casually or very very uh, simply or uh, very simplistic simplistic why oh, no god i know jesus or is it so very easy so very casual i have the breath of god in me we all have the breath of god in us every human being has got the breath of god in us in him in our heart so is a god the father and uh, jesus christ and the holy spirit the triune god uh, who created us and uh, jesus is the manifestation the human manifestation of god uh, who came down 
from heaven who is with us. It was born 2,000 years back. So the origin of Jesus Christ is not uh, the day of Christmas. 2,000 years back in Bethlehem. So before that there was no Jesus? No. Jesus is from eternity to eternity. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Aleph and the Tau. Aleph Tau. The first letter of Hebrew language, Aleph. And the last 22nd letter of the Hebrew language, Tau, is uh, uh, he, he is the Aleph Tau. Everything is within this. The first letter that shows the strong man is said. The last letter, Tau, the 22nd letter, it is uh, uh, formed out of a cross. It's the shape of a cross. Originally in the uh, ancient Hebrew, it was a cross. That means the God, the Father and the Messiah. Even in the first uh, verse of the Bible, uh, we all know that by heart, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So in the original language of God, in Hebrew, it's, uh, it goes like this. Bereshit, bara, Elohim, et, Hashmaim, Wyatt, Haaretz. <laughs> I repeat. Bereshit, bara Elohim, et Hashamayim, Wyatt, Haaretz. So, Bereshit means in the beginning. Bara. Berit, berit means covenant. Berit means covenant, an agreement. Covenant. In the beginning was covenant, and uh, Ish is the, is it denotes God. Ish, fire. The consuming fire was in the beginning and uh, he made a covenant with us. These are awesome things. These are awesome things. They're not just uh, what we understood, uh, with, you know, in our lifetime, certain things about God. Of course, we learned a lot according to our age or according to our life. You know, experience in Christian life. Uh, some of you may probably came uh, when you became an adult. Uh, maybe in your young age, some of you are born Christian. Uh, so uh, we have come into uh, a Christian life uh, at different times of our age. Rios also, born Christian, a generation of Christians. 150 years of Christians. Like Samuel, yet I did not know the Lord until 30 years of my age. The one thing to be a Christian, with a name Christian, there's another thing to be in Christ, to be in Christ. Okay, bye. Please go quickly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So, uh, so this uh, thing. See, what kind of a God? Whom we are worshipping. Maybe we have thought of him as very simple. 
because we know God is almighty in all these things. We all we all know the biblical wordings and all those things. But when you stop to think about uh, our relationship with Him, this God, this Almighty God, He has He has created everything. The heaven and the earth, the galaxies and the cosmos and uh, the planets, the distant uh, planets, the Milky Way and all those things of uh, astronomy, astronomical size, the atom, everything, uh, the smallest thing to the largest thing, and everything, it's all made. What is the purpose of all this creation? Just imagine. Why did God create these awesome, beautiful things? If you see the sky through the uh, electron microscope, uh, the Hubble telescope uh, in America, it's, it's awesome. It's, uh, you know, expanding his awesome colors and, uh, you know, unimaginable. Un you, you just can, can't imagine those things. Uh, such is the beauty of God's creation. And uh, he created us, you and I. So in this first sentence of the Bible, Varshit Parayalahim, at Hashemayim, et is denotes the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Messiah is there in the first verse of the Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> the one who was born after 4,000 years of creation, 2,000 years back, came in the flesh for us. He came in the human body for us. God came down to dwell with us, physically dwell with us. Is He not here this morning? He's here. The Bible says, well, two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst. He is in our midst this morning. Hallelujah. Realize. Let's realize the presence of God. We don't come for some routine thing, sing some songs and pray, say some prayer and listen to some uh, message and uh, <coughs> go back. How is our relationship? Do we realize this God, this awesome God in our lives? And uh, He's able to come into us, inside of us. Where is Jesus? Where is God? Where is the triune God? Inside of me, inside of you and I. Is He there? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How many of us are really sure that <coughs> God is inside of me. He's with me in my heart, in my body. Every fiber of my body in the presence of God is there. Hallelujah. In every cell of my body is there. This creator God is going on creating and creating and creating. And he said, let there be light, there was light. He did not stop with that. He's going on speaking. He's going on speaking. He's going on going. He's going on creating. Every time you see mangoes hanging in the tree, in the mango tree, not the apple tree. The mangoes come on the mango tree and the apples come on the apple tree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how this is created? <coughs> By the word of God. Hallelujah. Every lemon, every mango, <laughs> every sheep, 
every oxen, every human being, every baby <laughs> is created by God. So the new baby is there. Praise <laughs> God. So, and God sustains everything. He sustains. Hallelujah. Everything is uh, going on uh, reproducing, replenishing, reconstructing, going on happening and happening and happening. Everything by the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. God speaks. Praise God. And he came down in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he spoke. Our God is a speaking God. He still speaks. Even today He speaks to us. He speaks in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit. He's speaking. And Jesus was speaking to the disciples in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, after He came into the <coughs> ministry, you know all that, you know, how He was born in chapter 1, Christmas, then uh, He uh, and chapter 1 and 2, then chapter 3, he, uh, John the Baptist introduces uh, Jesus, uh, and then uh, Jesus uh, is uh, tempted by Satan, and then uh, uh, he was uh, 40 days, 40 nights, uh, he was uh, uh, tempted the Mount of the Mount of Temptation, Mount of Temptation, he was there, terrible wilderness, and then Jesus comes to baptized, he's baptized uh, in chapter 3 and then he attempted. Then he starts preaching. Then Jesus starts preaching. He's preaching from, and uh, he is also uh, healing the sick. Many people get healed. He comes to the ministry. In chapter 5, the famous Beatitudes. He was seated on a mountain and then he spoke. We all know all this, uh, you know, Beatitudes and blessed are the poor, blessed are the, those who mourn, blessed are the meek and all those things we know. Finally, he comes to the end of that chapter first five, chapter five. Uh, he says, uh, uh, he concludes, uh, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. <coughs> there are three uh, uh, things. Uh, the great one, one thing is the great commandment. We all know the great great commandment: love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind. Love your neighbor. We know that. And then we all know the great commission. What the great commission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the Great Commission. They make disciples of all nations. This one attracted me very powerfully. I was stuck. You know, it's awesome. This word is awesome. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. This we can call it as the great objective, the great goal, the great objective, the ultimate commandment probably. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Are we taking this as, uh, you know, very um, high standard of uh, uh, the word of uh, Jesus Christ uh, that he uh, sets a, a standard which uh, uh, has to be set like that by God, by Jesus the Messiah uh, because he is God, uh, that uh, what he says is, uh, uh, you know, extremely uh, awesome and marvelous and uh, absolutely perfect 
is it only a theoretical way uh, of saying just like uh, you know school master saying uh, you must come first in the class yes sir <laughs> is that is it that kind of a thing you know uh, you must come first in the olympics <coughs> you know high jump sprint, sprinting uh, come first in something like that attain the highest goal i must attain the highest goal some kind of a you know uh, aim to reach out to that kind of a height and uh, achieve uh, the ultimate uh, achievement in any field is it like that because everybody has some goal no oh, i must uh, you know come up i must come i must become the you know uh, manager of this department at least he ends up as assistant manager in tests <laughs> or he wants to be the principal of the college but becomes the head of the hod of some department english <laughs> everybody tries to achieve the greatest ultimate to what extent everybody is achieving to certain extent before they they get retired <laughs> but in this one is god speaking is jesus speaking as some kind of a utopian kind of a goal and he is telling this to human beings disciples to us therefore you shall be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect is it attainable is it achievable is it uh, possible to oh my god to be perfect as the father in heaven many of us have read this uh, several times in our lives we have just uh, you know quickly read over this and went to the next chapter chapter 6 and all those things did it ever uh, attract our attention or what jesus said perfection we are in different stages of growth spiritual growth some of us are spiritual babies maybe 56 years of age still spiritual babies some are very very fast they they come you know young age they get saved quickly they grow very fast they grow fast some are stagnating some are growing some are declining also different stages of speech what is my stage where do i stand Adam, I said, I was talking about Adam. For this only, Adam, where are thou? Is it that God can, I mean, realize where He is? He knows that He is behind that bush, behind the tall tree. He knows that. <laughs> not that He is not aware of that. What does He say, Adam? What are where are what are where are thou? Means, what is the what is your spiritual status where are you standing in your spiritual life in your relationship that means your relationship spiritual life means it's not some kind of a you know cloudy thing and uh, oh hell yeah not not that kind of a thing that's not spiritual life spiritual life means how is your relationship with the lord how 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 much how close you are how how distant you are uh, how much you have in you have the lord in us in you and me how much uh, uh, how much you obey how much you love the first thing is love how much you love the first commandment the the, the greatest commandment is love the lord with the, with all your heart with all your strength with all your might yes the first thing is uh, love how much i love am i loving first am i loving have you ever thought about this how many of us really really love the lord 
the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Have you ever experienced this love? Have you ever practiced this love? Consciously, how do we love? We all love our parents, uh, we love our spouses, husband, wife, uh, if it is there. <laughs> we love our children, no doubt. Children, they all love. <laughs> but husband, wife, it's a little. <laughs> Parents also, <laughs> they may probably love. love. But husband, wife, how much we love. The love between God and us, we as God's people, the redeemed of the Lord, is that like husband and wife. It's all, you know, this uh, covenant, covenant of God. As I said, all creation, every creation, every replenishment, everything that is going on, you know, happening. What about the trees? You cut down some trees, uh, some branches. It grows. After two, three months, it grows. Everything. You know, it's all going on every season. Summer, winter, and, uh, spring, and uh, autumn, and everything is going on. It's all covenant. God's covenant with us. That means God's love for us. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is the covenant of God. I have given my son to you. I will give my son to you. In Romans chapter 8. We all know that. Uh, the one who gave his son for us. Um, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son did not spare his own son. This is something really, uh, you know, frightening. I will not spare you. See, this is a very uh, severe word. He did not spare his own son. But delivered him up for us. Delivered him up. Give it off. I will not spare, not out of anger, or displeasure, or out of, uh, you know, God was not, the Father God was not angry with His Son, Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ. Pre-incarnate Christ means before He was born, Jesus is there. They are all one. Father, Son, the Holy, they are all, it's a fellowship of the Godhead. They are all one being, one being. And, uh, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all other things? All things. Our accent is not on getting all other things. Oh, Jesus, Father God gave Jesus himself. Oh, he will definitely give me a car. <laughs> definitely give me an apartment in Alliance. Definitely my son will go to U.S. Our, our, you know, uh, why do we God? Why do we need God? Why do we need uh, Jesus? Oh, my son in states for one sentence, <laughs> people push their children right from the LKG. Study, 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 study. No, <laughs> seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. No, oh, plus one. Study hard. Exam, public exam. Rest to exam, college, Senin, IIT Madras, Karakpur, Ahmedabad, Kidare, 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 
ऊपर चल सही नहीं है फ्रिश बेटे फ्रिश दरियामस पश्चिम पश्चिम ऑफ़ द स्टेट्स दे वांट टिक ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड वहीं ना डुगाड़ा नोबडी लव्स गाना नोबडी लव्स टू गो देर समचर समोर अगर पुश दम द द सोवियत यूनियन टू टेस्टेंट टेजिकिस्तान आई ऑलवेज आई एम स्केड ऑफ दैट नेम टेजिकिस्तान टेजिकिस्तान साउंड्स लाइक दैट सो वाइट वे नी जीसस so that my son the doctor will be stayed ultimately they have gone to canaan <laughs> they want to california san jose california <laughs> as ultimate goal then the children are you know finished his examens and joined the joined the microsoft is so soft nature <laughs> so it's on microsoft <laughs> then is growing in the company what about the marriage he wants american girl tall and fair <laughs> so the story goes on <laughs> so is this why god the father did not even spare his own son and delivered him up for us all is this for this uh, i mean earthly blessings nothing wrong with all these blessings good education in america and all the things africa anywhere but uh, we as god's people where do we stand where are the what are they God's expectation, the expectation of a trial God, expectation of Jesus Christ, the Jesus speaking these words in Matthew chapter five. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. That is the ultimate objective of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason that why He came down is to make us. perfect that's the, that's the reason everything else will be there put on the table shoes on the foot hat roof everything will be there car all those things are there but where is our heart where are, what are we doing on earth on earth what are we doing on earth Are we going on to perfection? I just want to emphasize on this. To think, I want uh, folks to think. Normally, you know, in India, people don't uh, think much. <laughs> One way is good. Whatever is said, they will accept and do it. <laughs> very good, very obedient people on earth. Uh, <laughs> Indians, the way the British, they obey the Akbar Baba, <laughs> then they obey the British. <laughs> Now obey, whoever is there. <laughs> But think, we have to apply our mind and think. We are in a race. We are going on, you know, in the routine, rat race. Every day morning, get up. Open the gate. Okay, give the garbage to the garbage man. Drink the coffee. <laughs> go to the go to more 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 market. <laughs> <laughs> Buy stuff. By the time children are going to school, dress up, scramble, put on the socks, put on the <laughs> shoes, <laughs> everything. 
scandal and then go to school, come back and do office, go to office, this, that, all kinds of things are there. Come back at home, cook food, eat, watch TV, quarrel with wife, pray and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Question does <dustbin. laughs> We are doing like that only. Routine. Those of you children are going to get married, be careful. <laughs> I feel very smooth, very, 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 very sweet for some time. <laughs> Once you get settled down. The routine starts. <laughs> Praise God. So, uh, this one. God told, see, uh, perfection is impossible. You may probably think, uh, how is it possible, Pastor? How can I be perfect? I'm a poor sinner. I'm the worst of all sinners like Paul. Some of you may be thinking, how can I become perfect? First of all, we should not get scared of this verse. This is uh, unachievable. So let me not. I try so I can. I want to be holy. I want to be nice. I want to be good, and all those things are there. But uh, to be perfect, like the Father in heaven, that is uh, not me. How can I do that? This probably uh, Brother Mohan, Pastor Mohan. Uh, uh, Paul, DJs, and all people, you know, big Billy Graham. And then Benin, Joyce Man. <laughs> they can become perfect. But poor me, how can I become perfect? <laughs> but God says, without God, without God, with God, all things are possible. The Lord will make that which. Uh, Perfect, that which concerneth me. Hallelujah. In Psalm 138, the Lord will, uh, verse 8, you read this psalm at home. Psalm 138, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Hallelujah. We can make ourselves perfect. It's difficult for us to make ourselves perfect. With God, all things are possible. We have to strive for perfection. God said to Moses to tell Israel, Be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus, yesterday we discussed uh, these things. Leviticus chapter 19, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I am the, I, the Lord your God, am holy. Or say you can see in Leviticus chapter 20, 26. And you shall be a holy, you shall be holy to me, for the Lord am holy, and have separated you from the peoples that you you should be mine. Mine. God claims us to be your mine. Every wife, every husband tells every wife, you are mine. You are my wife, you are mine. Every wife says to her husband, you are mine. Hallelujah. Some of you are already saying to your wife friends, you are mine. Huh? <laughs> but be careful. <laughs> yes. Don't claim anyone to be mine before time. So you have to be very careful. Yes, yes. This kind of sugar coated pills are good. <laughs> Praise God. Every wife, every husband say, You are mine, not the neighbors. <laughs> 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 
best relationship of uh, God with us. <coughs> that he, he, he is got such a zeal for us. Zealous God. Zealous means, you know, he is, uh, uh, you know, that kind of a, uh, it's, it's not anger, uh, it's uh, almost, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that kind of a, high sense of, uh, you know, uh, love and uh, responsibility that you are mine, the church is mine. Israel, the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, the uh, national Israel at that time, God chose Israel, God chose, you know, another thing, where are we coming from? What is our origin? My origin, my grandfather was there in Trinidad district. His daughter, second daughter, my mother. So I am her eldest son. That's my origin, okay. Praise God. <laughs> That's our immediate, uh, you know, ancestors we remember. Beyond that, one or two generations might know, may not know, before, we are beyond that we will not know. So, so I have a mother who has a mother, she has a mother, father, ultimately it goes where? Adam. <laughs> so we are all descendants of Adam. And from the time, after the time of uh, the deluge, we are all the descendants of the, of Noah. His name is called Noak. Noak. Okay. Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. So we are descendants of Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, the three sons of Noah. All human beings on earth. And then comes. Uh, Abraham. Then comes uh, the spiritual genealogy. Abraham, uh, then uh, Isaac, Yaakub, Abraham in Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac in Hebrew, Yaakub the spiritual forefathers. Where are our roots? We are Indians, we are Tamilians, we are Telguadu, Orissa, Bihari, Malayali, Assamese, or Tamil. Sablo Hindustani. We are Indians. <laughs> okay. okay. But beyond that, that's our passport area. Indian passport <laughs> within Indian Union. <laughs> but beyond this India, national India, where do we go? Where do we come from? Ancient times, we do not know from which part of the world we have come down to South India. The Dravidians, they call it as Dravidians, you know. Then the, uh, in the northern side, uh, they are uh, Japheth, they say, uh, descendants of Japheth. Uh, the Europeans, the white people, racially white. Then Shem is uh, Israel and uh, the Semitic region, uh, the Arabic Semitic region. And then Kush is the Negroid, the African region. So uh, it's like that. So uh, we are all came from somewhere. Abraham, he was uh, Iraqi, Bedouin. He was there in Ur, in Iraq. God called him to uh, Canaan, to the east, to the west, he called him. Then uh, Abraham's uh, descendants, 
uh, from that comes the 12 tribes of Israel and the nation of Israel. So spiritual genetics is, uh, uh, we go to uh, Abraham, the father of the faith, father of, he's a, he was the, when he was called Abraham, uh, his name was uh, uh, Exalted Father. When God called him and gave his covenant, made his covenant with Abraham, Abraham became Abraham, Sarai became Sarah, and uh, Abraham was uh, called uh, by God as the father of multitudes of nations. Hallelujah. So, we have a spiritual connection with Abraham. We have a spiritual connection with Israel. So, that is our uh, uh, ancestry. Praise God. By faith, we are all children of Abraham. And God is, when Jesus came, Jesus saved us by his precious blood. We have become the children of God. We are now children of Jesus Christ. And Jesus uh, gives a lot of counsel in his uh, messages. You see all these things when you read at home. Uh, you know, how to, how to be, you know, um, uh, there shouldn't be adultery in the heart and murder and hurt and all that. You should not have anger, we should not, uh, you know, become uh, uh, angry and hurtful. Marriage is sacred and uh, uh, taking unnecessary oath and all those things, uh, God forbids. Then go a second mile. In, in chapter 5 he says, verse 38, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek to him. If anyone wants you to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also, and whoever compels you to go for one mile, go with him too. This is a moral teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ that uh, you should not be confrontational that uh, you should uh, uh, you know how the the, the 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 qualities of Jesus Christ that he should, we should be like Jesus that we should behave like Jesus we should have that love and compassion that we should not be you know see protection for uh, safety is different if some thief comes we have to protect ourselves that's different but uh, as ethics, as, as God's, you know, uh, our Christian characteristics is that uh, we should not, uh, uh, you know, uh, be uh, kind of uh, confrontational. Give him who asks you, verse 44, from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Like that, love your enemies, love your neighbor, love your enemies, and all those things. And all these things leads to, you know, many teachings of Jesus Christ. Many teachings of Jesus Christ. You read all those teachings of Jesus Christ. And also, the law of God, or what God gave to Moses. If you read the, the five, first uh, five books of Moses, which is called the Torah, a lot of, uh, you know, instructions are there. Law means it is not uh, like uh, the Indian Penal Code, law. Torah means instruction. Instruction to live according to the teachings of God. Uh, that's a grace. The instructions which are given to us is grace. The law that is, in English language, is called the law, which is slightly misleading. It is not legalism, but the law is for us to be guided for instructions. So if you uh, read uh, the uh, law of Moses, uh, in the first five books of Moses, there are many things which are, you know, uh, if there are 613, 
uh, in law in the uh, Torah. 365 uh, laws are uh, uh, the do's, do's and don'ts are there. Both are important. Certain things are don't do this. Certain things are do this. For instance, uh, whom you should marry, what kind of person you should choose to marry, whom you should not marry. Moral laws are there. Contract laws are there. Ethics are there. Build a parapet wall on your terrace. The Torah. Still are we not following that? If you break the Torah, we'll be in trouble. When you, you know, uh, people go for uh, restroom, that, that should be covered. Those days, it should be covered. It should not be exposed for the sake of uh, hygiene and, uh, you know, cleanliness. Are we not following that now in different ways and forms? Nice restrooms we have. It's all from the Torah. God gave that loss, all those things. Don't put obstruction to somebody. Don't put a block, roadblock to somebody. There are many things. If you read that, all those things are to be read and applied. Except rituals. We don't have to follow Ukarma, Abhi Varna, Angi Ukarma, Angi Ukarma, Patu, Be careful, Patu, Be careful, somebody help me. Okay. Okay. Uh, praise God. Uh, see, there are certain festivals and rituals God gave to the people of Israel at that time, before the birth of Christ, to be observed and followed. And the Messiah is exposed in every one of these uh, festivals and uh, you know, every uh, rituals also. We need not be ritualistic. We not, it's not necessary that we should follow the ritualistic, uh, you know, yes, uh, those things. And uh, we don't follow, literally follow any of those festivals. But the festivals, everything denotes uh, the Messiah. The whole of the Old Testament denotes the Messiah. So, if we follow the word of God, we obey the word of God, we can go on to perfection. The Lord will perfect that which concerns us. With all our earthly life, our calling, our business, our job, everything, home, homemaking, all those things. Our, our objective should be, our goal should be to go on to perfection. Every day, step by step, step by step, step by step, go on to perfection. If it's not possible, Jesus would not have told this. You know, I just finished now. In John chapter 10, God says, Jesus says that he is going to make mansions for us. Uh, 14. John 14. No? John 14. Jesus said, um, verse 1 on verse 11, Let not your heart be troubled, but believe in God, believe in also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If it is not so, I would have told you. So very clearly Jesus, Jesus does not put us in any confusion any time in life. He will not put you in a fix, he will not put you in a jam. He will not put you in a confusion. I am making mansions for you. If it is not so, I would have told you I am not making any mansions for you. Like that, with regard to perfection, if it is not possible, Jesus would have told you to be perfect like the Father is rather difficult. Try your best. Go to the maximum possible. <laughs> <laughs> If it is not so, you would have told us. Because it's not told us, it's possible. Hallelujah. Jesus will never ask us to do what is not possible for us. With him all things are possible. He said you cannot do anything on your own. But with me all things are possible. Hallelujah. Let's go on to perfection. Let's seek perfection. 
It may take years, doesn't matter. Our heart must be this word. Jesus said, I must obey this. I must. We can, oh, oh, it's not difficult, so we just pass on to the next chapter. What is not possible? Whatever we think that is not possible, then we go to the next chapter. <laughs> so it's possible. I'm not perfect. Trying to be. I, I've traveled, I journeyed so much in my spiritual life. Every great man of God also, they are trying to, you know, grow, trying to go forward. But the Lord will consent. The Lord will perfect that which consented you and I. Hallelujah. That includes all other earthly blessings also. Yes. The covenant making God. We are in a covenant with God. Yes, if you attend to uh, Exodus chapter 6, 6. Exodus chapter 6, 6. I just finished with this. Don't the time. Therefore, Exodus chapter 6, 6, 7. Uh, therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from the, under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from the, under the burdens of the Egyptians. So, such a God who made the covenant with the people of Israel is also able to, he's made a covenant with us. We have made a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism. Lord, I die for my sins. You give me forgiveness and resurrection. Lord, I, you died on the cross for me. Your, bread, your, your, your body and your blood, precious blood, you broken for me. So I, have, I made a covenant with you, the new covenant in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So we are under the covenant. Every one of us, we are covered by the covenant of God. You are not just uh, left out for, to fend for yourself. You are under a covenant of God. And under that covenant, the Lord is able to perfect our lives. Amen. God bless you.